What's up? It's Marco, Sage of Soccer, and today we're going to talk about the U.S. Men's National Team U20 team that's been recently named for some friendlies coming up. Video's coming out a bit early today because we've got the U.S. Men's National Team squad that's dropping later tonight. We're going to be making that today, but uh, yeah, so getting into this team, it's a pretty strong team. A couple guys missing, but they all have explanations, well, mostly. And yeah, just going through it, starting with the goalkeepers, man, Alex Borto and Chris Brady. Two goalkeepers who I'm pretty excited about. Uh, Gabriel Salina, missing for reason we'll get into later, but Borto, he's been looking very good for Fulham. He's been their U23 goalkeeper, which is pretty amazing at his age. He's been starting for them a lot recently, uh, keeping clean sheets, making some good saves. You can't get too much for those games that's really only highlights, but from what I've been seeing, what he's been doing looks really good, and I'm, he's a promising player. He's even been in their... Uh, he hasn't been in a match day squad, but he's definitely been training with their first team. He appears to be the third goalkeeper in Fulham's depth chart at the moment, so definitely someone to look out for. And there are opposition that he's playing against that have played in League 2. A uh, guy, Jake Turner, I believe, out of Newcastle. I've seen him play at Morecambe before, so like, there he's at a pretty good level. I could definitely see him getting some loan time next year or maybe just continuing to progress with Fulham. They are getting promoted into uh, the Premier League 2 next year, so he will be playing at a higher level no matter what. But Alex Porter, definitely somebody to look out for. And next we got Chris Brady, who, if you don't know, Chris Brady is Gabriel Solina's teammate at Chicago. And apparently there was actually maybe controversy that Solina was given the start instead of Chris Brady. From what I've hear, been hearing, and it's what I've been hearing, Chris Brady's mostly been playing in just youth competitions in USL League One, so I haven't got to see much of him play. But he is a very good shot stopper, maybe even better than Slonina. But he's not as well-rounded as Slonina, but the shot stopping ability is amazing, and he's somebody to look out for. And if Slonina is injured, or he just has some time away from the team with the senior team, and Chris Brady gets a chance with Chicago... Like, give him a watch because he's going to be a very talented player. So only two goalkeepers called in. So next we're going to the center backs. And we actually got five center backs. Uh, well, maybe. I'm kind of <laughs> making up the position that I go because we got a lot of players who can play multiple positions. But Justin Che, Brandon Craig, Marcus Furcanis, Kobe Henry, and Jalen Neal. A very strong group of center backs. Justin Che, we know how good he is. Very athletic, very good on the ball. Just secured his move to Hoffenheim on loan. I'd expect him to stay there, and he's, he's a very talented player. Probably our best center back prospect we have, especially if you don't count Richards as a prospect anymore. But yeah, as I said before, ability on the ball, great. Like, we play him at right back sometimes. He might play right back for this team because it's, like, so good. Didn't look great there at the Revelations Cup, and I believe he's a center back, but definitely a very talented player. Then we got Brandon Craig out of the Philadelphia Union. Craig is another guy who's very good on the ball. I'd say maybe defensively on this team, he's probably the weakest. But on the ball, I'd say he might be the best guy. He's even He might even play in the midfield for this team. But Brandon Craig, again, on ball, de defender, very good. And I'm expecting good things out of him as a Philadelphia Union fan. I could definitely see him probably not breaking into the team, but getting a couple starts this year and definitely some opportunities in the USA Open Cup. And I'm really looking forward to him. Next, we got Marcus Furcanis out of LA Galaxy. He's His teammate, Jalen Neal, is also in the squad. Uh, I've always thought that Jalen Neal was uh, the better of the two, and it's interesting that Furcanis is in the team, but something that you should note about Marcus is he's a dual international with Canada, So, and Canada's not the strongest at center back. So this might be a, I don't know, like a political call-up, or but he has been a very good player in He's even been outperforming Jalen Neal a little bit recently. So it's definitely not all that, but I just wanted to mention that. And Marcus, someone to look out for. Though uh, probably, in my opinion, not the strongest defender in this group, but it's definitely a very good player. Next, we got Kobe Henry out of Orange County in the USL. He was a, the USL champion last year with Orange County, and he was called into the U.S. men's national team, uh, senior team, December camp. So looks like a very talented player. Uh, I've heard of European interest as well, and in the Revelations Cup, I really liked what I saw out of him. A couple of really good moments defensively in a tournament where the USA didn't really perform well, but Kobe Henry was definitely a bright spot and could be a very good player in the future. Lastly, Jalen Neal, as I mentioned before, very solid center back. Like He's got the athleticism, he's got the defensive ability, good enough on the ball, Like just a very solid player who I could see 
definitely positively impacting this team. Probably somebody who you want to have starting because just a solid all-around player. So next we're going to fullbacks, and we only have two true fullbacks. We have Mauricio Cuevas at right back and Caleb Wiley at left back. Although Justin Che could play there, and Kevin Paradis could also play in that uh, left back spot. So Mauricio Cuevas, very talented attacking a uh, wing back, pretty good defensively as well. He recently secured his move to Club Bruges. He's been playing with their reserve team. Um, you know, the interesting thing about Cuevas right now is we don't know how good he's going to be because he's he was out of football for a while or out of soccer for a while. Um, he was looking for a club for a very long time. I think the second he turned 18, he signed with Belgium, signed in Belgium with Club Bruges, but he wasn't playing in a team setting. I'm sure he's doing individual training. He's already been playing with the reserve team, so his fitness isn't a question, but we just have to see if he's going to be as good as his former self because if he's there and he's at that level, very talented player. But if not, well, we still got Justin Che there to play uh, right back. And at left back, our only true left back is Caleb Wiley. Uh, Wiley was somebody who I had not really known much about until the Revelations Cup, where he was amazing that tournament. Probably our best defender, and he was always a threat. Looked very good going forward, solid defensively as well. He's also, um, I think, the second youngest guy on the team behind uh, Obed Vargas. Caleb Wiley is a, he was born in 2004, but like December 2004. And this is a 2003 group, so he's one of the younger players on the team. He's looked very good. He popped up with a goal in his debut for Atlanta, which is amazing. He was looking a threat at left wing, so you know his attacking ability is good. Um, the question is, how will he will he do defensively? Um, I'm not really sure if that's a real concern for him long term, but as I mentioned before, like very young player. So. And the defense isn't the strongest part of this group. So that's a little bit of a question, but I'm really excited about Caleb Wiley and I'm honestly hoping he gets to play a bit more for Atlanta. He seems to be their like heir apparent to George Bello. And uh, as I mentioned before, Kevin Paradis can also play there, but he's listed as an attacker. Now going into the midfield, we've got uh, three what I'd call defensive mids, but uh, it's kind of wonky with how positions will be played. Uh, you got Daniel Edelman, Jack McGlynn, and Obed Vargas, and Brendan Craig can also play there as well. So Daniel Edelman... Uh, how I was talking with, about uh, Jalen Neal is how I talk about Daniel Edelman. Like, just a solid all-around player. Maybe doesn't have, like, the great athleticism, like, the standout defensive ability, but he's a solid player. Can move the ball pretty well, can defend pretty well. He's got decent athleticism. Like, just a solid player you can rely on. Now, will he be able to take that next step forward? Maybe. He's a very young player. He's been getting some time with New York Red Bulls' first team this year. And I'm really excited about him and see where he can go. But uh, he is a, just a solid player you can have in this team. Then we got Jack McGlynn, who's a bit of the opposite. He is an amazing passer of the ball, amazing technically. We saw him for the Philadelphia Union in the playoffs. Like, he was looking good. Athleticism is a bit of a concern. And with how we play, uh, I'm not sure if we have the defensive ability to cover for uh, his defensive uh, deficiencies in this particular camp but in the long term Jack McGlynn like his passing ability is very good and we're calling him up over Daniel Leva who is another guy who's very good at passing the ball so we're having faith in Jack McGlynn he looks like he can be a very good player and something definitely to keep your eye on and last defensive mid to talk about is Obed Vargas who we've seen how well he's been performing with Seattle this year he's been looking really good at that le at the MLS level where he doesn't look out of place at 16. Like, he has a ton of potential. I'm really interested to see how he can perform. From what I've been hearing, he's been really impressing at the last uh, O2 camp. And Seattle are obviously sold on him. Like, they're playing him over uh, Reed Baker Whiting and Daniel Leva, who are two very highly viewed prospects. So, Obed Vargas, really looking forward to see what he can do. I think playing wise, similar to Daniel Edelman, pretty solid in everything. I haven't seen like a real standout quality of him. But man, at his age, like he's he can keep developing physically. His on-ball ability and his understanding of the game, that's only going to get better. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Obed Fargas. Next, we're going into the more attacking-minded midfielders. And you could probably list like a good amount of the attackers under this, but I'm just dividing it into how they were listed. We got Paxton Aronson, Caden Clark, Diego Luna, and Rokas Puskas. So 
Paxton Aronson, really like what I'm seeing out of him at Philadelphia. He hasn't gotten too much time this year, but every time he comes on, he shows something. And the talent that he has is great. I think he's farther along than his brother was at this stage. Brendan was a late bloomer, but still, Paxton Aronson is looking really good. On ball ability is great. He can break lines with his passes. He's really like, like uh, fleet footed, like uh, like. I don't know if you used to play FIFA. Like he has the acrobat trait, you know, like really good with the ball, can move his feet really well, take on players. He scored a good amount of goals uh, in the Revelations Cup. He was playing up front, and he's looked decent in that false nine role. He might have to do that again. But Paxton Aronson, definitely one of the probably the a top five player in this group. Like he looks very talented. Next guy, Caden Clark. Uh, he was the captain of the Revelations Cup and, in my opinion, the best performer. Uh, we've seen him in New York Red Bull. He moved to RB Leipzig. He's back on loan there, but he looks good. Uh, man, eye for a goal, amazing technically. Like Defensive work rate is pretty good as well. Like He can press very well. His defensive work rate is good. Athleticism, I like it. Like. He's got everything that you want out of a player at this level. I could honestly see him knocking on the door for the senior team soon if he gets a good run of form for uh, a New York Red Bull, but he's one of the best player, maybe the best player in this group, and I'm really excited to see him play. Next, we got Diego Luna, and I would have expected him to be listed as an attacker because I think he would play as a winger in this group, but listed as a midfielder. He is a very talented player on the ball who is starting to get the most out of his potential. Uh, from, again, what I've been hearing, he was like a guy who looked really talented, but wasn't necessarily getting the most out of it. However, he's been playing a lot at El Paso in the USL, USSL, and he's getting his potential now. He's reaching it. He's, as, as a dribbler of the ball, I'd say he's the best guy in this group. He can take on a player with relative ease, like get past them very well. Technical ability is there. Athleticism, a little bit of concern. But uh, Diego Luna, like, the things he can do on, on the ball is amazing and definitely somebody to look out for because he could be, like, the talent of this guy is, like, amazing. Like, who's somebody I compare him to? Like, maybe, like, a, like a Ben Arfa, maybe? Like, that's the guy you could be looking out for. And the last attacking mid is a, one of the more interesting prospects in this group, Rokas Pukstas. He's been playing in uh, Croatia. He's been given a professional contract, I believe, but he I don't think he's made a first-team appearance yet outside of friendlies, but he's knocking on the door for the first team there. And Okas Puskas, he's a 2004, so he's a little bit behind uh, the rest of the midfielders, but I think he's the most complete midfielder we have. He's got the technical ability that a Clark and Aronson have. Like, he can play the balls with the best of them. And in addition to that, I think he's the most gifted athlete out of this group. Uh, he has a really good defensive work rate. He can really run. Dude, he's... Like, it's tough to call him, like, athletic, because, again, he is a year behind, but I think when he would be at their stage, like, once they're all fully grown, he will be the, the strongest out of this group. And while I don't expect him to start, I wouldn't play him over Paxton Aronson or Caden Clark. I think Puskas has the potential to be the most complete midfielder out of this group, and he's definitely somebody to keep an eye out for. Now we're going to the attackers and uh, what I think players will be playing as wingers. So first we've got Brian Gutierrez out of Chicago, and I like Brian Gutierrez whenever I've seen him. He can get the ball in the midfield, turn, run at defenses. Like The comparison I have is Luca De La Torre. Like, looks like a very good player, like amazing technically, can dribble the ball well, great in close control. Like A lot of these players are similar. Like I'm kind of rehashing a lot of things, like Paxton Aaronson, Caden Clark... Gutierrez, uh, Quinn Sullivan, we'll get to him later, just really good technical players with some good attributes. Like, he's a guy you got to look out for. And again, Luke De La Tour is my comparison. Next, we got Kevin Paradis. He's uh, at Wolfsburg. He hasn't been playing a lot recently, and maybe it's concerning that they released him for this tournament, but uh, yeah, he's been looking pretty good. Like, in the MLS, like, when he was playing in an advanced position, uh, I saw some comparisons, and statistically, he's as good as Paul Ariola in the MLS. Like, Paradis is a very good player. I expect him to play on, on the right wing, cut inside on his left foot, and he can be dangerous. And we know his defensive work rate. There's a good chance that he plays left back for this team. And 
man, very talented player. Hope we get to see the most out of him. Next, we got Dante Seeley, and Dante Seeley is a, talent-wise, he's up there with the best in this group. Uh, great technical ability, athleticism is there, he's got a ton of pace, he can run at defenders, he can dribble at them really well, probably only behind Diego Luna and maybe Paxton Aronson's ability to take on players, and he's even a really good finisher. Like, a lot of times when I describe a player like that, you're expecting me to go, but the end product isn't there. No, he's got the end product. His only issue is that he is an inconsistent player because he will bag a hat trick for PSV Young and then he'll disappear for a few games. Then he'll come back with another brace. Like, he has the talent to really be a star for this team. But he's got to put it together. He's got to be develop that consistency. I think he's on the right path. PSV is a great place to develop talent. And especially at this age, like, well, you have to take note of it. Like, inconsistency is not exactly an issue. I mean, the reason why a national team calls on veterans is because you know what you're going to get. Like, it's fine to be inconsistent at this age, but I want to mention it because he can be really talented. That's the only thing holding him back because Dante Sealy, he's going to be, he could be a great player. And last guy is Quinn Sullivan. As I mentioned before, uh, very similar to like the Paxton Aronson, Caden Clark, Bryden Gutierrez profile. Uh, Quinn Sullivan, he has scored a lot of really nice goals for Philadelphia Union. Uh, I'm kind of interested that they uh, listed him as an attacker, so I'd assume he'd be playing winger when he probably plays a lot deeper in the Philadelphia Union than Paxton Aronson. Like, we subbed him on as a, as an 8 earlier this year, so uh, I think the defensive ability is there. I might even project him as an 8 long term, but uh, can play the wing position again. You know, technical player, that's there. Really good finisher of the ball. Uh, he's got a bit of a mean streak to him that resulted in some red cards, but uh, that'll, again, like Dante Sealy, those problems will get fixed out as he gets older. And yeah, Quinn Sullivan, very promising player. And lastly, up top, we have no one. <laughs> no true strikers in this group. Uh, I'll get to what I think's up with Kate Coyle later. Uh, Malik Sonogo hasn't been too great in the last few U20 groups. Uh, understandable, he's a 2004 playing up. Uh, Christian Fletcher, he's a 2005, so it's understandable why he's not here. Uh, Patrick Way is injured. Like, we don't really have a striker in this group. Dante Sealy has played the nine a bit for PSV. He, if we play with like a real nine, Dante Sealy's likely to be there. If not, uh, Caden Clark has played the false nine for this U20 group. Paxton Aronson as well. Uh, I refuse to call this a weakness for this group because the only reason why it is a weakness is because Ricardo Pepe's with the senior national team. So, like, while we don't have a striker, like, don't think we're not producing them. <laughs> like, it, it's okay if a youth national team has holes because they're playing with the senior national team. But, yeah. Uh, he is going to be unavailable for this game. Uh, so that's it for the entire squad. Looks like a really good team. Uh, if I want to explain some absences, I wouldn't even call them snubs, but uh, Ricardo Pepe with the senior team, Gabriel Slonina, he did pick up an ankle injury in his last MLS game. So it's either that or he's with the senior team. I guess we'll find out at six. Uh, Cade Cowell, he missed the San Jose game with a sickness, and I'm assuming that's why he's out of this camp. I mean... Like, especially with we don't have a striker right now. Like, you'd expect Cal to be in this team if he was healthy. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, the only two guys I'd really call snubs, I guess, would be uh, Moses Nyman. I He's been playing for DC United. He picked up a red card recently, so I don't think he wouldn't be released by DC, but I think that they weren't releasing Kevin Paradis and Nyman as well earlier this year, so there's a possibility that he just wasn't released by DC United. And uh, I would have liked to see Noah Allen. He got a start for Inter Miami earlier this year. Got multiple. Uh, you could tell that he's a young player, but he had a couple of impressive moments. And especially because we're we have a backup left back. I we don't have a backup left back really, so I probably would have liked to see him instead of one of the other center backs. But I'm not going to lose sleep over it. And uh, other big absence, and probably the most notable one is Jonathan Gomez. So. I guess there's a, a slight possibility that this means he's with the senior team, but I doubt it. Uh, more likely is that he's he is really considering Mexico. I've always said that 
Mexico have the lead. I'd say it's like a 60-40% chance Mexico's leading that he goes with Mexico, but uh, uh, it is notable that he's not in this camp. That's probably the most disappointing thing about it, but man, still a very strong group for this team. Uh, guys look out for, uh, man, both goalkeepers. I want to see more of them because I really, you don't get to see much youth goalkeepers because a lot of the stuff they post is highlights, so you only get to see really good saves or them letting in goals. Uh, at center back, really like to see Justin Che, Kobe Henry as well, because Kobe Henry's getting a lot of a lot of attention. Mauricio Cuevas, I want to see him. Uh, really interested to see how Obed Vargas can do. Paxton Aarons and Caden Clark could be a really nice midfield. Really want to see how Dante Cieli can do. Like This is a very strong group. Excited about it. Hopefully they broadcast the games and I can talk about it later. But yeah, sorry I've talked about this group. See ya.